Yo guys, what is going on? It's Cryptic TNG. I'm back. Brand new video and I wanted to sort of, you know, do something a little bit different. Basically, I want to just go over all the sort of big talking points of sim racing, real racing and just little things that may have cropped up that I just might want to cover. I want to sort of do this in a, in a podcast form soon. I want to do it live as well. But right now I decided, let me just get it, get the first one out there. Um, So many things to talk about. I don't want to make it too long, but I definitely want to start doing it live. Probably when the AOR season's finished, I'll probably start doing it live and start getting like people on. So it's not just me rambling on about sim racing and real life racing and stuff like that. So um, yeah, that's pretty much pretty much all this video is going to be, man. Just talking about certain things that's transpired over the past week or so um, to do with real life racing, to do with sim racing. Um, so yeah, man, let's just get stuck into it. So if you guys didn't know, um, I wasn't privy to this information either until I watched Jardia stream. And um, it seems to sort of be uh, uh, maybe like a new meta sort of. I don't know if you can say it's an exploit. I guess I guess it, it is. But with with ACC at the moment, um, since the patch 1.9, it's pretty much has been endless amounts of exploits that you can sort of take advantage of. As, and and I mean the the latest one the um, <laughs> running the, the the max pressures or pressures at 30, 35 or whatever it is in 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 rain seems to be crazy um i don't know i don't know who even finds this stuff bro but it looks as if jardia's team managed to find find it out and for me personally i feel like jardia did the right thing he you know he didn't hold on to it and keep it for himself he let the community know, which I always think in, in terms of competition and stuff like that, I think is the, the best thing to do because otherwise, you know, what happens if you're just in a race and you're racing against someone who normally is within a tenth of you or whatever, and then all of a sudden you're in the exact same car, but they're two seconds a lap faster in, in, in wet to dry conditions. You're going to be thinking, what is going on? You know what I mean? Um, And it's just... It's ridiculous, man. Honestly, at this point, with Kunos and ACC, it's sort of like, I, I don't know, man. It's it's just a weird one. So basically what it is, is apparently, um, well, Dan McCormack said, running your pressures at 35, is it 35.6 or something like that? I'm not sure whether it's that or just max your tire pressures completely um, in wet weather conditions. It makes you about a eight tenths to a second a lap quicker and then as the track starts to dry out it makes you about two seconds a lap quicker two seconds a lap now for those who didn't know that information that is crazy bro something like that is, is you know honestly is is game breaking because to have a gap of two seconds even if you go back to the the whole toe trick and that it wasn't a two seconds difference bro the toe trick would give you like Four or five temps, you'd be quicker. Maybe six temps, certain tracks, whatever. But to be two seconds a lap quicker is ridiculous, bro. Actually ridiculous. To, to even be a second a lap quicker in the field, especially that these guys are in, that these guys are racing in, is crazy because there's probably, you know, a second between the whole field on natural ability. So to add another second or another two seconds to that, you know, if, you, if you're someone who didn't know this information, you're driving around three seconds a lap off the pace thinking, is it me? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I, I just don't think it's right, man. Um, I don't know what's going on with Kunos, but it seems to me at the moment with, with ACC, either you minimize something or you max something and it seems to work or, 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 or not, right? So we've had the minimum dampers, damper trick, we've had that. That worked. Um the minimum wheel rates and stuff like that that seemed to work now they're they're maxing tire pressures now they're they're minimizing tc running zero tc even in like wet conditions people like switching off tc and stuff it's like like what's actually going on <laughs> okay why is why does it just seem like everything has to be either maximized or minimized to produce the best lap times at the moment and it's kind of gone from real sim into arcadey in terms of in terms of setup man um the whole the whole fun in building the setup is trying to find you know new ways to make your car feel good if you already know just max this minimize this and you can't you know 
You can't get any faster than that. That's literally the fastest way. And what's the point, man? It takes all the fun out of it for me personally. Um, you know, that's why I just don't spend that much time on setups anymore. Because most of the setups, let's be real, most of the setups right now on ACC are ridiculous. I know there's probably guys like Nils who he can comb through a lot of the MoTeC data and stuff like that. But who, like, intellectually in that field, there's not many people at Nils's level that are at the same level with driving the car itself, you know? So even if you know MoTeC, you have to be fast enough to be able to use that. Um, and it just seems like we're just going backwards on ACC in terms of the, the, the realistic the realistic aspect to, to the setups is just, it's, for me, it's just kind of dead. Setup game for me is dead right now because you could probably download five or six different esports driver setups and I guarantee the majority of their setups will probably have a, a couple of things different, but the majority of them will just be the same thing because we kind of all know what is fastest right now. There's very few things you can change, but there is a clear path of what is what you do to the car that makes it faster now like for instance the whole zero tc or running tc as low as you can as i said before tc2 is almost redundant at this point um and it's like not not everyone wants to mess around with tc settings and stuff like that when you know in the real world like you would never be able to get away with that so like why are we why is kuno's not actively looking to patch these things man. that's one problem that i have with kunos is they'll know there's a problem but the patch just you know there's no there's no hot fix you know there's no oh, let's let's fix this because that wasn't intended that way let's 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 fix let's fix it so that's not a problem anymore just just left it <laughs> you know i know the game's getting on the game's been out for a long time but you know we're still getting DLC coming, so you should still try and support other issues that the game has. Um, obviously, I'm sure Jardy is probably going to get a bit of backlash because the guys who probably found this exploit probably are not too happy that now it's getting exposed. But I mean, it is what it is, man. Um, of course, if you're the one who finds something out, if you if you put all the practice in and you are the ones to, um, I guess, stumble upon something, then it's kind of your secret to hold, but at the same time, when something is game breaking and and you know you're competing competitively, do you really want to win because you know something's so broken and you're you're the only one that knows? Is that really a win? Not to me personally. I think like we should all strive to have the game in the best state it can be in. So you know, holding on to silly secrets like that to me. Is is not is not worth it in the long run because even if you was to win three, four, five races, whatever, and then the secret, you know, the secret comes out, and then people know that you were running this sort of thing for a long time, you kind of you kind of lose a little bit of respect, anyway. You know, people don't really see you as oh, it's just gonna be okay. That's the reason why you won. You know, so I don't know, man. Like, but. ACC needs to get it together, man, for, for sure. They need to get it together. Go back to 1.7. Go back to 1.7. Go back to before we had all the crazy toe settings when, you know, messing around with, with, with Carstar and stuff like that wasn't such a big thing, man. We've been running, like, max Carstar. We've had max negative toe. We've had minimum... Um, <laughs> we've had minimum TC. I mean, minimum dampers. All, all sorts, man. All sorts. All sorts of minimum and maximum. It reminds me of like F1 2010. You know what I mean? Top two to the left, bottom two to the right. That's that's the kind of that's that's the kind of setups that people are running now. It's just it's getting kind of boring, man. It takes the definitely takes the fun out of grinding for me. It takes the fun out of grinding setups and finding a really nice setup. You know, it takes the fun out of it, man. It's just it's just light work to be honest with you. But also as well, guys, I want to talk about um. Uh, the the f1 esports man so i watched a bit of the um f1 esports race i didn't get all of the race i sort of um saw some of the beginning and then i saw the end and wow thomas ronha managing to win by like six seconds in in f1 esports terms is actually insane bro that's that's crazy um of course this guy was you know 
many people thought this guy was cheating. I'm not even going to lie. When I saw some of the clips, I was like, yo, this guy's traction looks a bit, you know, <laughs> it looks, it looks kind of irregular. You know, he, his car's not stepping out, but you know what they say, if, if you can do it at land, then, um, you know, you're, you're, you should be proved innocent, man. Once you, once you perform at LAN in front of the lights and cameras, you definitely can't be running those sort of hacks or cheats and stuff like that. And he probably had a better performance live than he, than he does when he's in his own home. So got to give credit where it's due, man. Um, Yano Otmer obviously having to apologize in the end, basically apologizing to him saying that he drove a great race because he did, man. To win by six seconds is not like... It's not like endurance racing. It's not like doing an hour-long race on ACC, bro. Literally, you know, that whole field is split by a couple of attempts, man. So, shouts out to Thomas Ronhold. That was an insane performance, bro. Insane. Um, the thing is with F1 Esports, man, like, for me, I don't know. I'm probably a little bit more old school. I would love to see a 100% race with some tire strategies and more than one pit stop that you could, you know, like over a whole race distance, see what could be done instead of just, you know, these sort of 50% races, they're, like, they're cool, but we kind of know that, you, you know, everything, everything's a one stopper, right? And if, you know, if you don't get off to the greatest of starts, you have an incident, you know, you, you can get back up towards the front, but the chances of you being able to come back and win is a lot slimmer. The, the whole, you know, there's not really that much of a, um, of like a strategy you can employ. You can either go on, obviously you can pick any tire you want, but still that we, we know what, how the strategy is going to play out, man. I'd, I'd love to see an actual hundred percent race, you know, like proper different strategies, not knowing what's going to happen until we get right to the end. But I guess they like the short, fast entertainment. I actually do like the longer races, man. Um, and with F1, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's weird because I bought the new F1 game. It definitely feels a lot better than a lot of the older titles that I had built and bought. Um, but still, man, when I, whenever I go on a set of Corsa and then I jump in like a, an F1 car or I download one of the modded F1 cars, it just feels so much more immersive to me than the F1 game does, man. And that to me shouldn't be the case. There's not many games you can download that feel more immersive than driving a GT3 on ACC, you know? So like for, for me, I wish they would get that aspect right. I believe F1 could look a lot better. Um, like it could look and feel a lot better for me personally. When I watch the like the replay cameras or the TV cameras on, on F1, it just looks kind of just like like cartoony you know it doesn't look like wow that looks great you know i, I think it's f1 man it should like be the pinnacle the esport itself is very popular but it should look the part you know for me it doesn't look amazing it, you know it's fun it's cool the guys can race really close and stuff like that but it just for me something missing man something missing um I would definitely like to see more, personally. But it is what it is, man. For now, you know, they've gone down this direction. It's popular, so I guess they won't change it. But I wish they did. I really, really wish they did. Moved on to some real F1. And um, just wanted to cover the whole thing. Like, Logan Sargent obviously completes the grid for Williams. So Sargent is signed up again. I'm kind of shocked at this one. I didn't think that, personally, I didn't think he had done enough. Um, it kind of seems a little bit lightweight, and I don't know, man. Um, I just thought they would have replaced him personally. I don't feel like he did enough. Alex Album actually just stomped him all over. He he might have even been worse than the teeth. I swear the teeth did score a point, right? I'm pretty sure the teeth scored a point. Um, and I wouldn't say there's a massive difference between what I've seen from Sergeant and Latifi, to be honest. And I think there's just this is better drivers out there that probably could have done with the opportunity. That being said, I know the Williams probably isn't the easiest car to drive. And Alex Albon is a very good driver. I know that he got slammed by Verstappen, but Alex Albon's actually a very good driver. Especially if you were watching Alex Albon before he even got to F1, you know that he was 
he was in the mix with guys like you know like Russell and stuff like that. He was in the mix with those sort of guys. So I know that Alex Albon definitely is a is a, a talented driver, but I guess Sargent gets to keep the seat, and um, so that means there's basically no new drivers for for next season. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens next season. Me personally, I feel like it's going to be another Red Bull walkover because I think the advantage this year was so big, it's going to allow them to have a better platform for next year. And they've probably just spent all their resources, or well, the majority of their resources on next year's car, where most teams were not able to do that because they kept on updating and updating and updating. But I would say, um, no, hopefully we do get a few more teams at the front. I feel like, man... Ferrari could just tweak a few things, bro. They have a car that sometimes is fast enough, but their tire wear is terrible, bro. Terrible. That's what the other teams really do have to to nail down for next season because I, I don't inherently think that the Red Bull over a lap is an insane car. I think it's fast, but over one lap, I don't think it's insane. I think the the Red Bull gets its speed from just having zero tire wear, so... That's why at the start of races, they're able to stay kind of close. But once the tire wear starts kicking in, Max just disappears into the distance, man. Of course, there is definitely tracks where the Red Bulls just out and out faster. But a lot of their advantage is down to, you know, tire management and stuff like that. And um, I'd like to see it close close up a little bit. I want to see my boy Leclerc get, an, get another chance, man. Even though, what well, I, I will say, I will be honest, man. Um... I do think Verstappen probably has the edge over Leclerc in terms of consistency. Um, I feel like Leclerc does have a mistake in him now and again, which probably is his downfall, but he's definitely got the raw speed, man. He's got the raw speed. He just needs to cut some of the errors out, and he's right up there, man. I, I was also impressed. I'll be honest, I was impressed with, with Lando as well. Um, but again, he... I don't know whether he has a, a complex when it comes to being challenged or whatever, but at vital times, I feel like he made small mistakes that cost him this season. Um, whether he could have won races or whatever, he definitely could have won the Qatar sprint because he was quicker than he was quicker than Piastri, you know, and he ended up messing it up. So those are the things that he has to improve on. Mercedes just 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 need to have a whole new car, bro. Their car is just. It's not the one. I'm not going to say it is terrible because it finished second in the standings and you don't finish second if your car's completely garbage. But um, I will say they, they need a car that inspires a little bit of confidence in their drivers because it's very up and down. Like, you'll see sometimes they'll be close and other times they're just nowhere. And it also, like, the, if you look at the disparity between the drivers in a lot of the time in qualifying, it's like big gaps for, like, no reason, unexplainable. They'll have like massive gaps between them sometimes, you know? How can you be qualifying half a second off your teammate and not know what is going on with the car? It's, it's definitely a weird one. There's definitely not half a second difference between Russell and Hamilton, you know? And both at times this season, both of them have been nowhere near each other sometimes in quality, which is kind of kind of crazy. But honestly, I see Red Bull winning pretty much every championship until we get to 2026. And then, you know, the importance of the engine will come in again. Um, but for for as far as aero is concerned, I don't think you're. I don't think you're going to touch Red Bull when they've made this good of a start. Basically, you know, if if it was a case where a lot of the teams are really close off of the, off of the back, like Ferrari should have been closer this season, but they they dropped the ball. Well, I'll say they dropped the ball, but that sort of that TD that came in about the planks in 2022 at Spa has hurt Ferraris literally ever since. Um, but, you know, hopefully some teams get it together. We shall see. But talking to F1, I wanted to talk about something that is kind of um, maybe a touchy subject for some people. It's not for me because I'm a very honest person. I'm just going to keep it 100% real. Let me see if I can find it first. Give me two seconds. So this is the post that I saw on um, on Twitter. <laughs> Ah, oh, bro, listen, man, crazy. So basically, he's like, Lewis Hamilton speaks on diversity after taking a, a, a picture with his team, I guess, right? And he's basically saying um, there's not a lot of people of color, there's not a lot of women, 
So, you know, there's a lot of work still to be done to get more diversity into F1 and stuff like that, right? And, um, bro, for, for me personally, look, I look at it like this. Some, some things, you need context to be applied to it, man. Because, let's be real, like, I'm black, I can tell you, like, when I was growing up, I did not know anyone interested in motor racing, like, at all. N none of my friends, like, I didn't know anyone. And I'm talking about black, white, enough, I didn't know anyone in general that was interested in motor racing, right? It wasn't until I started, you know, playing, like, F1 games and stuff where I met other people online that were obviously interested in racing. And the first time I met someone that was black that was interested in racing was... 2017 2018 i was in my 30s before i met someone that was interested in what i was interested in and they were the same color as me that was printer right on project cars that was the first black guy that i met that I, that was interested in racing think about that i was in my 30s which is kind of crazy now they're saying you know lewis is saying obviously there's not a lot of diversity or whatever but you have to be realistic motorsport is very very niche it's Motorsport is not even one of the biggest sports in the world, bro. It's not. And that's the thing. A lot of people will say, well, how come, you know, you know these, these people need to be given a chance. Black people need to be given a chance. Women need to be given a chance. Bro, before you can give people a chance, they have to be interested, bro. If you're not interested in something, how are you going to get a chance? You're not. No one cared about F1. I, I can say this. Most black people did not care about Formula One before Lewis Hamilton joined the sport. That's just the way how it is. It's just like most black people did not care about politics and who the president was before Barack Obama ran for presidency. You know what I mean? Like, there were people in England celebrating Barack Obama becoming president in America. It's not even the same country. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? A lot of people will support literally only because he's black. Just like there's a lot of Lewis Hamilton fans that are black that only support Hamilton because he's good, he's successful, and he is black. That's the only reason. They don't have an infinity for the sport. They don't have an infinity for motor racing. They're literally only there for Lewis. So you need to understand that you're not going to have a bunch of diversity if this is not something that people have ever really aspired to be before seeing Lewis Hamilton. Now, you might get some... You know, you might get some people now, you're going to see a lot more growth now because you're going to see more people seeing Lewis Hamilton as an example and wanting to get into motorsport and stuff like that. But in terms of people that are his age or people that he's going to be around and working with, of course, you're not going to see diversity because most black boys don't care about racing. <laughs> That's the truth. You don't have a diversity problem in football, in basketball in any of those sports that are really popular to us that, for instance, when you go to school in PE, are you, you know, are they taking you go-karting? No. When you're doing PE, you're playing football. <laughs> you might play basketball. You're not playing. You're not going to any go-karting tracks. You're not doing anything like that, right? So most of us come out of school, most people in the playground, they want to be footballers. Everyone wants to be a baller or a basketball player. No one wants to bloody drive f1 cars no one even watches f1 you know what i mean literally i'm the only person my whole entire, i started watching f1 in like 1994 i did not know another person that i could talk to about f1 until 2010 you know how long that is i didn't know anybody none of my friends watched f1 even like one of my friends um we call him tiger guy he loves cars but he's not interested in f1 he just loves real life cars you know like mustangs and stuff like that but he's not interested in racing like that he doesn't know the ins and outs of the sports yeah I'm sure he will know one or two drivers see them on the news see them on sky sports or whatever but he doesn't know the sport most people don't know motorsport even if you look let's have a look i got the um top 10 most watched sports right top 10 most watched sports in the world today Obviously, they say soccer, but it's football, right? Football's number one. Cricket, number two. Cricket is number two, right? Basketball, hockey, tennis, volleyball, table tennis, baseball, 
American football, rugby. Motorsport is not even in the top 10. So why would you expect to see a ton of black people when already the, the pool to pick from is very, very small because the interest in, in motor racing is not there. And this is, you know, around the world. Rugby is more watched than F1 is. Now, to, to me, that seems crazy because I find rugby boring, just like I don't really find NFL anything special or hockey or baseball or any of that shit. But around the world, globally, you know, motorsport is, is tiny. And when, when you have an industry that is small, to then look at like minorities and stuff like that that are not getting the chance or whatever, of course the number is going to be even smaller because already there's not a great interest in what, you know, the sport that we have a passion for. So, you know, some people just, it's not applying context to the reality. A lot of people saying, oh, it's all these people are marginalized and it's, it's like, just, just stop, man. Like, we, like the, the sympathy party, bro, to me, I find it personally, I find it stupid and annoying, bro. To me, it's stupid. Like how many, how many black people do you see in water polo? None. Because there's zero interest from the majority of black people in water polo. I don't see the, the one token black player coming out saying we need more, you know, we need, we need more diversity in water polo. There's not going to be no more diversity because no one cares enough to have an interest in the sport. You know, not on a, on a, on a grand scale. Like F1 is never going to be how football is. Is there a, is there a, you know, is there a problem with people of color in football? No. You know why? Because everyone wants to kick ball. And, and that's just what it is. Even if we go to the, these are the top charts that British people, this is not around the world. This is just in, in where I'm from. F1 is like sixth. I'm not even saying no, not even F1. Motorsport, should I say. Motorsport is sixth. And that doesn't, that's not just F1. That could be MotoGP, British Touring Cars, World Touring Cars, GT Challenge, whatever, right? It's sixth. It's behind cricket and tennis and rugby. You know, it's even over here, it's not even not seen as anything special. So why would you expect to see, you know, just tons of representation? It's I think it's kind of weird personally, and I think that um personally I just think he's doing too much. I think he's doing too much like he's calling out his own team, but to me it doesn't make sense because if you look at the opportunity that Hamilton was given in the sport himself, like, bro, you were signed at 13 by McLaren. You know, you were testing F1 cars in 2004, bro. You know what I mean? Like, he, he's acting like he, he had to, all his life, he had to fight and it was a struggle. Yeah, his dad struggled because motorsport is expensive. But it's not just solely expensive for him, it's expensive for everybody. Do you know how many drivers were karting champions that won Loads of championships were successful in karting and stuff like that that could never afford to actually participate in motor racing to the level that they wanted to because they ran out of money. You know, it, the majority of people were never going to make it to F1, not just your skin color. You know what I mean? And the way how he's kind of phrased it, he's making it seem like there's, you know, there's the white man is trying to, trying to stop us from getting in. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of, to me, to, I find it stupid, man. I think it's stupid. It's it's really not a surprise that you don't have a lot of, you know, a lot of coloured people in motorsport. Like, how are you going to have a lot of people in when you don't have a lot of interest in something? It doesn't make any sense to me personally. All right? Then, like, he said something about not having a lot of female, you know, female people that are owning teams. Or well, apply context, bro. To own a team... One, you probably have to be a billionaire. Now, there is a lot of billionaire women in the world, but then they have to want to pump their money into F1, which is a niche sport. You know, there's so many other sports they could pump their money into and probably get a greater return than F1. So again, he's saying a lot of stuff with no context whatsoever. He's just, you know, making it seem like, you know, like white males are out here stopping everyone. Like there's, there's black people at the FIA. Let us in. We want jobs. Let us in. <laughs> you know, it's not happening, bro. 
Like, I don't get why he says stuff like this. And for me, okay, I get it. He wants to see more representation. And he's going to see more representation because of his example that he set. But to sort of be like not knowing why you don't see a lot of black people in the sport today is because most black people only aspire to be something once they see an example. You know, they aspire to, to be um, in a certain field once they see an example in that field. Oh, I want to do that. That's what happens. And that's why if you look at a lot of, especially Hamilton's newer fan base, they are not motorsports enthusiasts. They are Lewis Hamilton enthusiasts. They don't care about racing per se. They care about Hamilton. So they don't have that, that actual love for the sport like people like me. Like I was watching racing a long time ago, you know, British touring cars. I used to watch IndyCar, Champ Car. I used to watch Pablo Montoya. I, I was up watching like highlights at like 2, 3 in the morning when I was younger, just watching any piece of racing I could catch. Ricard Rydell. I used to know every single touring car driver, everything. That's all I used to watch was racing, 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 racing. All my toys were cars. I used to have tons of scale electrics. I had like a, probably over a thousand Matchbox cars I used to have in a bag. I used to go to sleep with cars in my hand until the paint came off. I was always passionate about cars and racing and stuff like that. Most people now watch F1 because of their favorite driver. And once their driver's not there anymore, they don't have an interest in it. So it's like, you know, for me, if you want to, if you, if you want to see change in something, you, you have to explain to the, the fans that the truth, this is what I liked about what Max Verstappen said the other day about the whole Las Vegas race. Like, Try and show the people what it truly is to be an F1 driver. Not all the glitz and glamour. Show them like the, the, the real side of things, like how hard it actually is, bro. You know, let people actually learn the sport instead of just like, I just like that guy and that's all I need to know. Most people, it's, it's, like, it's like watching the, the, the World Cup final, seeing the, the free free draw of Argentina and Brazil and thinking every game of football should be like that. That's not how football is. That's not really how football works, man. I mean, most football games are probably boring. The majority of football games are boring. But, you know, people that understand the game, we will watch every single match. But then there's people that think that F1 should be 2021 every single season. And F1's never been like that. The majority of F1 seasons are boring. You know? And um, I, I think people need to take the time out to learn the sport Take the time out to learn the grassroots and look at how many people could have came through to F1 and never made it. You know, I got to race like on project cars. I remember racing like Jake Dennis on P cars. The guy was rapid. I used to race Jake Dennis on, I think it was P cars one. Yo, that guy was rapid, bro. Fast. You no, know? never really got the chance in F1. I know we tested the Red Bull the other day, but he never really got the chance in F1. And that's how it goes for the majority of people. There's only 22 seats, bro. 22 so it's crazy man like if you was to go and ask most black guys who their sporting goat is no one is saying a racing driver no one from my era is saying a racing driver you might get a few now that will say Hamilton because you know Hamilton's been present while they've grown up but for me you know I was already an adult by the time Ham Hamilton was in F1 for me, sporting goats, they're gonna they're gonna be saying Mike Tyson, maybe Muhammad Ali, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. People will be saying Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, and stuff like that. No one is saying Senna. <laughs> no one's saying Michael Schumacher, Hamilton. No one from my generation is saying that, bro. Because that, you know, those well, me personally, like I liked Schumacher or whatever, so that's that's who my my guy was. But even so, I would still probably say Mike Tyson. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's 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 the guy that I used to, I used to, I used to look look up to. Yeah, Mike Tyson. The guy's an animal. You know, and to to act like you know, like the like like black people or people of color being kept out purposely by F one is, I, I think it's stupid, bro. Personally, I think it's very stupid of him to say that because he knows that the interest has never really been there. So how can you judge um, 
how can you judge why you don't see diversity when most people don't even care about race in any way? <laughs> it makes no sense to me. And the, the thing that annoys me the most is like, bro, look at Hamilton's career. How many drivers, right? Think about this. Actually, think about this. How many drivers have had as privileged career as Lewis Hamilton has? He started off, he was signed at 13, right? He started off in McLaren. How many drivers can you remember? How many world champions can you remember that started their career and had a race winning car from the word go? You know, how many drivers have never been in a midfield team or a team that's at the back of the field? There's only one guy that I can think of besides Hamon that started off in a race winning car, and that was Jacques Villeneuve. Everybody else started off at some shitty car. You know what I mean? Most other people started off at a car in the midfield near the back. Alonso did. Vettel did. I mean, Verstappen did. Raikkonen did. Schumacher did. Everybody, literally. <laughs> like, apart from Jacques Villeneuve, I can't think of anybody else. You know, maybe Damon Hill. I'm sure these guys started off at Williams or whatever. I think Damon Hill and Jacques Villeneuve, I think they're like the only guys, bro. And both of those dudes had famous fathers. So they, they would have got like a little, a little bit of a leg up. Do you know what I mean? They both had famous world championship fathers, right? Hamilton came into the sport in a McLaren, bro. Like, you came in to the sport where no one else really has had that luxury. And you've been at the front pretty much your whole career. So how can this guy act as if, you know, there's barriers to be broken down when, you know, they kind of opened the barriers in a way where most normal drivers that are seen as privileged weren't even getting. So I don't understand some of the aspect where he comes from in terms of that. And I think the whole thing about seeing diversity, I think it's context needs to be applied pretty much. That, that's what I want to say. It's a bit of a rant because I see so many, you know, other black people feeding into this narrative that we're not being given a chance and we're being held back and stuff like that. And it's like, you need to understand the levels of where motorsport actually is compared to on a, on a whole spectrum of sport it's tiny it's very very small so to have interest in motorsport is one thing to, to be a person of color and have interest is another thing because as i said there ain't many black people that cared about motorsport especially before lewis hamilton was there so that's pretty much it that's what i'm going to say on it man i don't want to ramble on anymore i think i've rambled enough but definitely guys i want to be doing um, I want to be doing this a bit more often. Maybe I might start dropping it on Sundays and hopefully I can get some other people on and we can talk about various topics, man. I just sort of wanted to cover all the little all the little things that I've, I've just been seeing on Twitter over the past few days or whatever. Um, just wanted to cover those things. But guys, I will be back. Um, got a race Monday. I don't know whether I'll stream it because my, again, game's just acting up whenever I stream. So we shall see. Anyway, guys, Cryptic TMG, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell to catch my videos first, and peace!